everyone, it's Casey from Yoga Squared. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. Um, it's kind of rainy and dreary outside today, and basically I'm, I'm in the mood for the yoga equivalent of like chocolate chip cookies <laughs> and Netflix. So we're gonna be doing a nice, long, luxurious stretch together. So let's go ahead and come on down onto your back. Put your feet flat on the floor. And rest your hands on your belly. And if you want to start to, you know, kind of tilt your pelvis forward so that way your back starts to connect to the floor a little bit more, you can. But you don't want to feel like you're tensing the abdominals, but you also don't want to be bowing everything up. So find something that's, you know, supported and neutral. Allowing your breath to fill up that space in your rib cage. And check in with yourself. Check in with, first of all, how the physical body is feeling. That always gives the most obvious signals of how we're doing. Whether you're tired, or maybe you're having a hard time settling down. Maybe you're feeling antsy, lethargic. Maybe you're already perfectly relaxed. There's not really any wrong answer. The whole point is just to notice. And then start to notice what your breath is up to. Breath always gives us deeper clues as to how we're doing. A nice, slow, deep breath, naturally occurring, might give you the clue that you're already feeling pretty tranquil and calm. But a more shortened or jagged breath might be sending signals that maybe there's some, uh, some interruption going on in the heart and in the mind that needs some soothing. Start to see if you can create that nice, long breath. Filling the body with calm, serenity, ease. And if you haven't already sealed the lips, let's start to breathe exclusively through the nose. Creating a little whispering sound as you breathe in and then a sighing sound as you breathe out, creating your ujjayi breath now. Allowing the breath to be stretched out to its longest possible length. On your next inhale, let's bring your arms out to a T or goal post. You're going to scoot your hips off to the left and drop your knees off to the right. Tuck your knees up and close towards the belly so that way you know, your knees aren't downward. They're kind of piped up. And then pick up your right shoulder and then just scooch it out a little bit. Easy, relaxing twist. And then start to lift your left arm up. You're going to lift it all the way up to the sky and then close it onto the right hand like a big alligator mouth. Okay? You're going to take your left hand. It'll trace up above your head as you inhale. So draw a big circle. Look over that left hand. And as you exhale, close the alligator mouth. Left hand goes on top of the right. Do that again. Inhale, open and circle. Exhale, close the hand on top of the right one. Again, open and close. Good. Now start to stay here on your right side. You're going to kick your left leg out to the side. So 
pelvis resting on the ground. Circle your arm all the way up and over, and then release your right foot out from underneath that knee. So I just kicked it out. I'm gonna lift myself up with my left hand, find my right foot, and then come lay back down for cattail pose. My right arm is just kind of relaxing. And you don't need to have this left knee straight. It can be bent. It could be bent all the way if you need to. It just depends on what your mobility is. I know I've got a couple gumbies out there. If that's you, you can find the toe. Either way, let's really think about getting that left shoulder heavy. Couple more breaths in your cattail. You're gonna let go of your foot carefully, so that way it's slingshot away. Bring yourself back into that little sideline shape. Opening your left arm back into that twist, returning your knees back up. See if there's a little bit more space available now. Good, now start to put your feet on the floor. Pull your hips off to the right. And let's bring your knees to the left, tucking them up in towards the shoulder. Good. Easy twist. And now that I've felt that ease on the other side after the opening, now I can really tell the difference now. This needs more opening. <laughs> so start to lift your right arm up to the sky. Close it on top of the left one, so now you're lying completely on your left side. Inhale, trace your fingers up and around, looking over the right fingers, and then exhale, close. Again, trace the fingers up and over, big circle, and close. One more time. Tracing, and closing. Good. Stay on your left side, and then just Put your right foot out like a kickstand so you're not stacking the knees anymore. Reach up with this right hand, find that bottom ankle, then try and lay yourself back down. So you do not need to have that right leg straight. It can be you know, semi-straight or completely bent. Whatever works for your body. The right shoulder is attempting to touch the floor, but it probably won't. Breathing into your cattail. Long, luxurious breath. Good. One more breath in. And slowly release your foot. Return back into that twist. Oh, feel so much more spacious and relaxing now. We'll come back to center. Put your feet flat on the floor and start to reach your right leg up to the sky. Just see what's available by straightening the leg as much as you can and then point the toe so that way you're trying to make that arch of your foot almost like a letter C. Flex your foot again, trying to pull those toes all the way towards your shin. Now point the toe a lot, the letter C with the arch of the foot. Flex your foot now, bend through your knee, reach up, catch on to the outside edge or the big toe side of your foot for half happy baby. And that left hand can stay to your side or bring it onto your belly. Whatever feels better. And notice if you took all of that tension that might have been in your hip and shoved it up into your shoulders. I just caught myself squeezing my shoulders up. You don't want to do that. You want to let everything kind of exist independently of one another, even though you're all connected, right? That's operating each piece independently. Good. Nice long breaths. And the 
whole idea of this type of yoga. This type of yoga is called yin yoga. If you've never done yin before, it's all about long, sustained holds. And the idea is that when we hold a stretch for a sustained period of time, we allow our muscle reflex, the stretch reflex, to let go. So your muscles automatically tense up, right? When you do like a big stretch, and it makes it so that way the muscle cells are like semi-contracted. It takes a, it takes a couple minutes for that to stop firing. So that's the first piece is allowing your muscles the time to go, oh, okay, we're just stretching. There's nothing scary going on. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing is that when you hold for a long period of time, it actually starts to um, allow the, the liquid that surrounds all of your muscle cells to, to start to permeate into your more plasticky tissues, like the ligaments and your tendons and things. And that's where most of your tension is, is in that connective tissue, not in your muscles. Your muscle cells themselves are very pliable. It's all the other stuff, like the casing that surrounds the cells. Those get very, very dry, and that's responsible for the tension. When you put long pressure, it allows those dry tissues to rehydrate just by soaking up the moisture that's around them. That'll do it a while longer. You might notice that you've gotten pretty deep in this pose. Uh, my, my knee went all the way to the floor, I just noticed. <laughs> Good. All right, let's start to release our foot down. I'm going to put the sole of the foot, face the left, and then bring your left foot to join the right. And you're going to feel a major difference between right and left. The right leg is going to feel very loose and this left leg does not really want to cooperate at all. So let's fix that. I'm going to put the right foot on the ground, reach up, find the outside of that left foot, and then I'll take that nice long happy baby on this side. And we're not necessarily forcing ourselves into our deepest version. We're just kind of taking something that we can hold for a little bit. Again, check yourself for pockets of tension. There's those shoulders again, doing what they're not supposed to be doing. <laughs> nice long neck, easy expression. Notice that the longer you hold and the more you release tension in other parts of your body that you start to go into a depth that you may not have been to before. Just through patience and perseverance. Basically life right now is one long yin yoga pose. Just hold yourself in one spot for a while. Good. We got a few more breaths here. And start to release your foot down. When you're ready for that Supta Baddha Konasana again, the soles of the feet together. Hopefully you feel much more even now. Just let your hands rest on your belly. Just pick up your chest and kind of move your shoulder blades closer together. Letting the sides of the knees almost be magnetized to the floor, where they're not being forced down, they're being drawn down. And nothing is resisting that pull. Bring our hands to the outsides of our legs, close the knee 
hands together. And then stack your right knee on top of your left one. And then reorient your back so that way the low calf is on the ground. And reach up, grab onto that right knee. Everything else is just going to kind of hang loose. And I'm not, you know, muscling it in. I'm just sort of folding my hands on top of my knee. Everything else is just kind of hanging out there because it's connected to me. I'm not even flexing my feet. See that? Everything's just passive. Allow your right thigh to get heavy into your ribs. Feel that nice warming sensation happening on the back of your right hip. Make your breath as fluid as possible. If you want, you can scoot your hands down your shin a little bit and squeeze them in a little closer. Check your chest muscles. You don't want to be tensing your pectorals. Relax those. Now let's start to open up this right knee. So just slide your right ankle onto the left thigh. You're going to put your right hand underneath that right knee. Reach up. Maybe find the big toe on that left leg. Well, if that's not doable, grab on right here or onto the calf or take both hands onto the calf or whatever you can get. Pulling that heel upward. Fantastic. Start to release your right foot down. Flex through your left foot a lot. And then point to that left toe. Make that C with the arch. Again, flex a lot. And then point. Squeeze the arch of your foot. And then relax your foot, crossing left knee on top. You're going to bring the left knee into the chest and just interlace your hands on top of the knee or shin, starting over on that other side. And just let everything drape so you're not holding this leg up at any you know, height, you know, like you would in a vinyasa class. Let it go. It's just hanging there. Kind of like how a lemon is hanging off, you know, a lemon tree. It's not being held out at some perfect angle. It's just kind of dangling there. It's like the weight of the lemon, you know, pulling the branch down. And the heavier the lemon gets, the more the branch droops. Picture that inner thigh on the left leg almost melting into your belly. Beautiful. If you feel like you have a little bit more room, you can take advantage of it. You can scooch the hands down the shin a little bit. So return back to that passive stretch. Good. Now begin 
to let go, just move your left ankle onto the right thigh. Place your left hand on the inside of the left knee. Reach up, see if you can find that right big toe. And if that's absolutely impossible, you grab on somewhere else, then maybe let the left hand help you out too. Find what works. Very good. Just a couple more breath cycles. Start to let yourself open up. You're going to bring your left leg out from under there. Grab onto both big toes, but rather than coming into a regular happy baby, let's take it into the yin version, which is stirrup. So you start to let your heels come in towards the glutes. And just hold on to the toes. And that's really the only engagement that's happening. Everything else is getting slack. Really, you know, lean into that energy of release and surrender and the exhale. Almost like you're setting down like this huge heavy bag of stuff every time you breathe out. So you finally get to set it down. That's what you, that's what it should feel like. Ah. And you picture that energy. You might notice that things start to happen in the musculature. Okay. Got about 10 more breaths. Make your neck feel a little longer. And then start to release your feet down, placing them as wide as your mat. And let the knees go off to the right. Pick up your right foot, place it onto that left thigh. We'll be here for real long. Takes about maybe five breaths. Good. Release your right foot. Hold the knees to center and drop them to the left. Left foot finds that right thigh. Give you a little tug on the hip flexor. Very nice. One more breath in. Let's release the foot down. Bring the knees back to face the sky and then stretch the feet away from you. Reaching the arms up and back. Let the low back arch up off of the ground. Point through the toes. And then start to walk your feet over to the right hand side of your mat. You'll pick up your shoulders and do the same thing. Move it over to the right. And then just start to let everything relax. So you might notice, oh, my feet kind of roll out. Let's combat that by crossing your right foot over the left one. That will kind of keep your hips neutral. Imagining all of your breath going into that left side of your body. Heaviness through that left elbow. Take about 10 more breaths. Good. 
Bradley so. Just like unhook that right foot. Walk your way back through center. Take a stretch there. And then bring your feet over to the left side. Shoulders move to the left side. And then just cross that left ankle over so our hips stay square. Soften your breathing and soften your body. And addressing that energy in those two places invites your mind to be soft as well. Know your brain isn't going to stop thinking. You might start to slow down where there might be actually some space between your thoughts rather than multiple trains of thought happening at once, which is I know the way my brain is. This is nice just to kind of let things go on to slow-mo. back to center. You know, keep your right arm over by your ear. Just roll over onto your right side temporarily. And you're going to take your left hand right between your shoulder blades. So I'm putting my knuckles right between my shoulder blades. My palm faces away from me. I'm going to roll back down so that way I'm laying on my hand. And I can keep my feet on the floor or extend them long. I'm going to put mine on the floor because that feels better for me at the moment. So we're going to get a nice big sensation on the shoulder cap there on the left side. And the tendency is to kind of hold your weight up <laughs> if it's a big sensation. I want you to lay it down. Just imagine like your body is a big stack of flour and you're letting it just release its heft to the ground. Even the belly, yeah, don't hold your belly up. Let the belly soften down too. Allow yourself to go into a state of passivity depth and heaviness. Lift your back up a little bit so that way you can release this left arm nice and slow. Laying it out, palm facing up. Notice how your left shoulder now, and your left arm, almost feel connected to the ground. My right shoulder now feels like it's hovering up above the floor in comparison. So let's fix that. Roll over onto your left side. Put your right hand up between your shoulders. And then roll back onto your hand. And then start to take those little checkpoints again. Notice if you're hovering that right shoulder up above the ground. Picture yourself like a big sack of flour and it's being set down onto the floor. All four corners of that sack of flour come down at the same time. And my top right hand corner doesn't want to go down. <laughs> Use a nice deep breath, start to release that since it's feeling stubborn right there. So I'm not forcing it down, the breath creates the space for it to go down on its own. 
I'm not really doing anything. more breaths here. Good. And start to roll over to the left just a little bit so you can free that right hand nice and slow it comes out palm faces up now your shoulders should feel just completely <laughs> married to the floor and if you want to keep your feet flat on the floor that's great but you might like the idea now of straightening the legs out letting the toes face out or possibly the heaviest shavasana shape you've ever had Almost like it's been paused. There's no fidgeting or readjusting. Just suspended in the space between. to fully relax. The earth cradling you. The breath filling you. about 10 to 15 breaths of absolute quiet and stillness. If you're happy right here, there is no reason to leave. If you're ready to start exploring that space you've created in your body, you can start to open up through the fingers and toes. Bring the arms up and overhead again. And then bring your knees into your chest. Rocking side to side on your low back. Start to tip off to one side. Taking just a moment there and slowly making your way up into a comfortable seat. Nice tall posture once you get there. Close your eyes and take a moment to notice the effects of your yin yoga practice. I know for me, I always feel like I got a really good night's sleep after I do one of these, even when I definitely did not get a good night's sleep. Take a moment to notice what that, what that does for you. We'll bring our hands to our heart center, bowing the chin in, being thankful for this practice, I know that we're all thank you, thankful for you. So thank you so much for being a part of our online community. We can't wait for it to be an in-person community again. We miss you all so much. Um, if you're enjoying the online content and want to continue to support the studio during our temporary closure, we are beyond appreciative. 
of any support you're able to give. Um, you're able to use your existing membership. Just let us know if you'd like to keep your auto pay active or if you'd like to deduct a class or keep your prepaid membership um, active rather than pause. Just let us know and we can take care of that for you. Um, you can also send something over via any of our donation platforms if you prefer to go that route and save your regular passes for when we're open. Um, you can send something over uh, via our website. If you go onto yogasquare.com, there's an online attendance banner on the home page and on the pricing page. Just click that, that will take you over to a $5 donation option. You can also send something over via Venmo to Casey Merkling, C-A-S-E-Y-M-E-R-K-L-I-N-G, or via Zelle in your banking app. Um, you would use yoga squared studio at gmail.com for the routing email. And if you have any questions or requests, I'm here. <laughs> Um, so please you know, reach out to me if you need anything at all. I'm around, I'm here to be of service, and I cannot wait to be back in the studio with you all again. Hope you have a great day. If you're watching it today, enjoy this really dreary, rainy, cozy weather and go put something sweet in the oven. Have a great day. Namaste.